Canada's champs are back. New season, new look. And our guys are sporting new equipment. Their kicks. Basketball shoes are very important. Um, it's all about uh, feeling comfortable. I want to know how you think your shoes help your performance on the floor. Got to be sturdy, a little bit light. Feeling uh, the right fit. I mean, I'm nothing without my shoes. <laughs> I'm not the fastest guy in the world, so any type of little advantage I can get. You know, basketball shoes are everything. The pros want an edge, and so do you. That's why we're doing something we've never done before. Testing some of the most expensive basketball shoes worn by the NBA's biggest stars, 11 pairs in total, to see how they stack up against cheaper shoes and ones that fall in the middle. Let's box it up. Let's do it. So we're shipping all these shoes to a sports lab. Can we really put a price on performance? We ask Raps fans at Jurassic Park. Is it all about the shoes? The shoes are 90% of it. That's a lot. And then 10%'s talent? 10% talent, if you look good, right. you play good. And Companies spend a lot of cash trying to convince you that their more expensive shoes are worth it. But having the zone closer to the foot definitely gives you more energy to go accelerate. With catchy claims like extra bounce on court, premium locked down feel. This is next level. And the ability to blow right by defenders thanks to a speed plate. Does price matter to you then? Price definitely matters to me. Uh, price, price definitely does not matter to him. But uh, yeah, price does matter, especially when you're growing at his age, right? Do you think if you bought a cheaper shoe, that it would do the same thing for you on the court performance-wise? Uh, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I wouldn't buy a cheaper shoe, though. I, buy, I want to buy something that I know is quality. This time, boy. Same deal for the Deer family. Let's go. When they're not gaming, Jakari's playing ball with his dad and coach Dave. His mom, Linda, is their team's manager. How important is the right kind of footwear? Very important. Why? When he's actually playing, obviously we don't want injury, right? That'd be the first concern. Mm -hmm. I think the shoe's more expensive for a reason, right? If they put in work and in technology, and the science and all that behind it. So I think if your shoe's gonna cost like at least $230, it's, it's a pretty good shoe. They care a lot about shoes because their young baller has big basketball dreams. What's your ideal dream situation? To make it to the NBA, yeah. Any team in particular? No. No Toronto Raptors? <laughs> what? <laughs> All righty then. Me and you. Let's meet the Wades. They live for b-ball. Dad Greg coaches, and the older boys play, so they buy sneakers on the regular. I'll double check that it's sticky, and I'll, I'll ask them to check the sole, you know, in the store, and uh, check the flexibility, check, uh, you know, the fit on their foot. And they pick shoes carefully for performance, safety, and most importantly, cost. Is the most expensive shoe always the one to buy? It's mostly name, prestige, colorways. So I try to avoid those, you know? and try to find the... Mid-range. Yeah, try mostly. to find a mid-range, right? There's the budget aspect of it. I mean, they have to be within reason. Because top-of-the-line shoes for Greg and his sons would cost more than $600 in one shot. Two families, one that believes high-priced shoes perform better and one that doesn't. Let's put it to the test. Now remember, we buy 11 pairs of shoes. Price tags range from $80 all the way up to 240 bucks from major brands, Nike, Adidas, and Under Armour. And our list includes shoes endorsed by LeBron James, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, and Steph Curry. Time to check up on our sneakers. We head to the University of Calgary's Human Performance Lab to see how things are going. Hey, Darren. Hi, Asha. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Darren Stefanishin is the CEO of Sport Insight, 
Bill one-ups the project manager. Here's what they're testing for. Okay. Traction, how the shoe grips to the floor. You need to have enough traction between the shoe and the surface to be able to perform the movements. Cushioning stiffness, how compliant or soft the shoe is under your feet. Well, the more compliant a shoe is, it tends to be more comfortable. Energy return, how much rebound or bounce you get from the shoe. We compress the shoe, and then we measure how that known load rebounds or responds once we release it. There is some research, some very recent research out there that shows that the amount of energy that's returned from a shoe can have an influence on performance. And forefoot bending stiffness, how easy it is to bend the front of the shoe. It's been shown that with that appropriate bending stiffness, you can actually perform better. So we can have an indication by doing these mechanical tests how this particular shoe is going to function or perform. Come on, bounce. The first celebrity indoor shoe dates back to the 1930s. Semi-pro baller Chuck Taylor promoted these kicks for $3.25. This is the ripple sole that's been developed uh, through research the last five years. Fast forward to these sneakers in the 50s. Mike, what makes you the best player in the universe? Then the Air Jordan in the 80s changed the game with slick marketing and the $100 price tag. The sneaker world has never looked back. And the rising prices have come along with soaring sales pitches like for the strongest, explosive torque, and zero gravity feel. Yeah, it sounds good. But it doesn't mean anything. Professor Ben Oneg has been researching footwear for decades. Explosive torque doesn't mean anything. Zero gravity doesn't mean anything. I mean, we have gravity, period. Why do you think companies use those terms then? Well, they think they can sell more shoes. Yep, pulling in almost a billion dollars each year in North America. You got the original right there, right? The original Jordan Brad. With diehard sneakerheads waiting for the latest and greatest shoes to drop so they can play in them and show them off. Back with the Deer family, they're about to give predictions for our test. Which shoes will stand out from the rest? I would say the LeBron. Adidas Next Level, your pick. All right. And this one was mine, the Adidas Harden. They're all picking pricey shoes. What about the weights? It's like candy for them I to look at this. Them. Their Christmas list is being formed as we speak. <laughs> yeah. I may as well go curry. Cursex. PGs. PGs as well. The Wades play it safe, picking shoes in the middle of the pack. So which family is on the ball? This is your marketplace. 11 pairs of basketball sneakers and days of testing. Will a more expensive shoe perform better? Does price really make a difference? The lab isn't the only test that counts. That's why we're out on the floor with wear tester Jay Tianko. He's got cred. I got the living legend himself, Spike Lee, what's up, baby? How you doing? Co-founder of a sneaker magazine and consults with big brands about their shoe. Jay is doing a real-world test to see how the shoes feel. Under the watchful eyes of kinesiology professor David Frost and basketball trainer Shane Denny. He's now getting near as low as he was in the last one. And literally every step you can hear. Yep. Every step has a sound. Yeah. Jay's testing for things that aren't covered in the lab, focusing in on how the shoes support his feet and ankles. I'm be curious to know how his foot is fitting inside the shoe. Right. Just, it doesn't look like it's, uh, it's quite fit to his foot properly. He's done his drills, but the test isn't over. Now he's doing what many of us can't afford, playing pickup games in 11 pairs of shoes to see which one feels the best. Just got finished playing in the Nike Kyrie Flytrap 2s. This one has a compression band on the forefoot. Documenting the three weeks with video diaries. Hey everyone, I just finished playing in the Adidas Next Level. Uh, yeah, no laces whatsoever. 
Just finished playing in the PG 2.5s. Felt really good on foot. All right, Jay, it's been a long haul. This is the moment of truth. What are your picks? The Nike LeBron 16s, the Under Armour Curry 6, the Adidas Dame 5, the Nike PG 2.5, and the Under Armour Lightning 5. Good to know. Jay gave top marks to some of the most expensive shoes and ones that land in the middle. Will Jay's personal feelings on support match up with the results from the lab? But first, let's check in with Jakari Deer, who's dominating on the court. In this league, he plays with Spencer Wade from our other Marketplace family, and Greg coaches from the sidelines. The kids play scrappy ball and dig themselves out of a hole. But in the end... Uh, I think we tried hard as a team, did our best. Did, a, did as much as we can. Our families come up short. Could a different shoe provide an advantage? If it comes out that a $240 shoe is a lot better than a $160 shoe, I'm not going to deprive my kids of that additional performance. Time to find out. The lab results are in. Are you ready to find out which shoes made the Marketplace starting lineup list? Yeah. yeah. Here we go. First up, the Nike LeBron 16 at 240 bucks. Wow. So the LeBron did really well in cushioning, stiffness, and it also did well in energy return. Jakari, you were the only one who picked the LeBron for overall performance. Yeah. What do you think now? I think I made a good choice that they're in one of the top five. Okay, yeah. is Jakari onto something? This is your marketplace. Basketball is back. And all eyes are on Canada's team, the Raptors. For me, it's just about comfort. You want to shoot and feel comfortable uh, to give you a lot of support, especially for a big guy. Make sure, you know, it's high top and then... Uh... I think that's, that's the most important look on, on the shoes. Be able to move and stuff, like that's what I really go for. That's what the pros look for. Let's go Raptors! But what about you? And how much are you willing to pay? Cheap, expensive, doesn't matter. Just rocking, just shoes at the end of the day though. Definitely doesn't uh, improve your game, it's just shoes. Two ballers, can you tell? You pay the cost to be the boss. Snoop Dogg said it best. You pay the cost to be the boss. Is he right? We send 11 pairs of basketball shoes ranging from $80 to 240 bucks to a university lab for testing. And now we're revealing the results to our basketball families. One of our top five, the Nike LeBron 16 at 240 bucks. They are comfortable. What else is on the list? The $200 Adidas Harden Volume 3. Wow. Oh my god. The shoe was near or at the top for starting and stopping traction, and it also got top marks for energy return. Next up, the Jordan Why Not 0.2 at $170. Uh, oh. <laughs> not bad. I mean, why not? <laughs> Sport Insight found that it was comparable to the LeBron 16, one of our most expensive shoes. Also at the top, the Adidas Dame 5 at 165 bucks, a good overall performer. Okay, guys, we're down to the last shoe in our top five starting lineup. Want to hear what that shoe is? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. The Adidas Pro Spark. 2018 at $95. What? Wow. Let that sink in. Quite surprised that they're in the top five. Because there's a big gap between like the LeBrons and the Adidas. It's crazy. I don't even know what to say. Because <laughs> because I, I, if I saw $95, I'd immediately look elsewhere. And it ranked well in traction, in energy return, in cushioning. I mean, this shoe did solidly. I think David's speechless right now. Yeah, we're totally. And what blows me away though is the fact that it's it can hang with 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 the big boys right there. And um, yeah, for that price, I mean, why pay 240 when you could pay 95 and look like just as much as a star, right? 
The team at Sport Insight agrees. None of these shoes performed poorly in any of the tests that we did. There was no correlation between price and any of the mechanical properties we investigated. So just because you're buying the most expensive shoe doesn't mean it's going to excel at all these mechanical properties. And what you value in that particular shoe is going to be different for different people. And you might be prepared to pay for certain things that other people might not be prepared to pay for. But the price is not necessarily going to dictate the total functional characteristics of a particular shoe. We contact all the big brands in our test to find out why some of their shoes are more expensive than others. Adidas and Under Armour don't respond to our questions, but Nike says it considers a variety of factors when determining price, including manufacturing, cost of materials, and the selling of its products. Marketing professor Avni Shah agrees there may be many factors involved, but says there could be something else at play. Is some of it hype? Oh, absolutely. The price itself is not just simply the materials, but the whole kind of kit and caboodle of the website and the display of everything and the box. Even like the celebrities who get paid, right? right? We're all paying a fraction of uh, LeBron's 500 million. It's not like Nike is, is, is eating that cost. You have to be able to communicate and sell your product. These are brands that are selling shoes. Okay, now that the series stuff is over, let's play ball. These families now say they'll make different moves the next time they sneaker shop. Maybe not the cheapest shoe is always the worst. Don't judge the book by the cover. Would we look at a cheaper shoe? Absolutely. The ones that people wear the most. Uh, they're not always going to be the better ones. Sometimes you don't have to pay that much to get the same performance. If my parents won't really let me get the highest one, it doesn't mean I'm getting the worst shoe. Because what matters most is not how much you pay, but how you feel when you play. This is your marketplace.